So could you talk about what it was like farming without the, you know, the modern tra tractor we know today and what it was like using horses? And well, I, this was corn planting time, and, uh, of course, you know, in those days, we didn't, we nobody planted before May the 20th because yeah. of all the bugs and stuff. We don't plant before May the 20th. See, we were done before April the 20th this time. But anyway, uh, we, we weren't supposed to plant before May the 20th, and I, I remember uh, I was probably about eight or nine years old, and my brother was two years younger, he was seven, and our job was to, we were planting corn, and he had fertilizer in a box wagon, and just bulk fertilizer, and we had two coal buckets, and our job was to fill the coal buckets, so when he got to the end, why well, he could get the coal buckets and fill the fertilizer yeah. box. It was a two-row corn planter with a wire stretched on it, so the, the wire trip, you know, it was a wire trip planter. Yeah. You had a nod every so often. Yeah, a nod okay. every so often. Okay. And uh, when he got to the end, well, he would move the wire over as far as he could, and then go on, and when he got to the end, move the wire over. But the wire went clear across the field, see, wow. with the notches there. And so... Uh, it's not like a lot of hard work. <laughs> that was a lot of hard work, and yeah. it was a cold day about like today. Well, it was cold, it was about like it was yesterday. One day we were down there planting, and uh, on the back 40, as far from the house as we could get, you know, and, and down at the south place, and we lived over there. So anyway, we were back there, went back early, and we was in like the cold wind blowing, and we'd fill the coal buckets, and then we'd get in the wagon, where it'd break the wind, it was a box wagon, so yeah. we could get to break the wind, but boy, was it cold. Yeah. And of course, at noon, while we went, went home to dinner, and uh, took the horses up to the barn, let rest them, and then he had another pair of horses, another team of horses he brought back in the afternoon to put on the fire, so that they could, so we'd plant all Switching the way then, yeah. till about, about four o'clock. My name's Eric Miller, I'm 17. This farm's been in my family for over 100 years. Uh, I'm Spencer Sage, I'm 19 years old. I work out here on the farm, and uh, it's not very easy. It's been the family for three generations, and I uh, plan on taking it over after college. I'm Tyler Young, 19. This farm's been in my family for four generations. Prices are uh, going down, and fuel's going up, and it's just uh, it's getting really hard to uh, make a dollar out there. About everybody I know has got a second job to help support That's the farm. About two years ago, I moved away for about three months. Being away from the farm just killed me. I had to come back. It's the only thing I know and love. We're in the barn that uh, Lucas's great-great-grandfather and his sons built in 1919. And before there were tractors, they used horses. And here's a couple of old horse collars and yokes. And my grandfather, Lucas's great-grandfather, used to say, a good marriage was like a good team of horses. If everybody pulled together, things worked out right. And so back in the day when farms were before mechanization, you know, mom, dad, kids, grandparents, everybody worked together for one goal. That's to make a living and a better life for each other and everybody uh, contributed. You know, the kids would work and the parents would work and the grandparents would help out too. And they all had their own job. Nowadays, mom's going one place, dad's going somewhere else, and the kids are everywhere else and, and uh, they're kind of not all pulling together a lot of times. And so uh, that's why we're kind of nostalgic for older times in the old farm where everybody had a single purpose is to carve out a better life. A hard, it was a hard life, but they were making a better life for themselves. This is, a, this is an Avery uh, Woolworth Well. Uh, don't know what year it's from, probably from the mid to late 30s. Uh, it's a two bottom, so it would have been well suited for like a, for an F20 or something in the 30 to 40 horsepower size. This is a 37, 1937 Farmall F20, uh, the first really road crop tractor that Farmall or the International Harvester made. Uh, it was designed for doing cultivation work, and you could also plow with it. Uh, so it was just sort of more or less the the all-purpose tractor. Uh, any 80-acre farmer, 88, 80 to 100. And 20, 130 acre farmer could pretty much farm their farm with this tractor and do anything they wanted to with it. 
Now, my dad no, said guys used to be uh, able to break their arms doing this if it kicked back. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to have them tuned in pretty well. <laughs> are you, are you, you're not going to break your arm here, are you? I hope not. <laughs> I haven't so far. Of course, now that I've got the audience, it won't start. <laughs> This is a uh, McCormick Farmall International Harvester M. The, the M is the model size, and TA is a uh, variation of it. It's a torque amplifier, which is in the uh, gear shifting. It gives it a like a half speed to go faster or slower. Super MTA. My grandpa, my grandfather, Lucas's great grandfather, bought this tractor brand new in 1953. A lot of guys will fix them up and take them in parades. I still use the tractor around the farm a little bit, not very much, just for odd jobs and odds and ends and stuff. This was in 1950s, in the late 40s and early 50s and all through the 50s. These were extremely common tractors, probably the most popular tractor on farms back then. There, there's no power steering, so it's a little hard to steer. No power brakes or anything. The hydraulics, which will raise and lower the implements, uh, are kind of weak, but it's still a vast improvement over doing it by hand. Um, what else do we? There, you know, originally when these were built, there was a uh, you would crank, you'd put a crank on here, and you would crank start it. This one has a battery and electric start, so that was a big improvement. There is no cab on it, so which means that you are out in the elements. So if it rains, you get wet. When the dust is blowing, you are eating dirt all day. This is an International 656 tractor. It uh, came along in the uh, late 60s and early 70s. It is kind of one of the transition tractors in between the M series tractor that showed you and then the uh, 1086 series tractor where they started putting cabs and, and uh, bigger tractors.